Honeyfords blamed what he calls the Trotskyist left for Mr. Honeyford's departure. And Councillor Eric Pickles, chairman of the Education Committee, said he was sad to see Mr. Honeyford go. I thought it was uh, a, a tragedy that Mr. Honeyford should now be considering leaving the school. But we had said, and we advised him, that as long as he wanted to stay there, he'd have our full support. But the last thing we wanted to do was to force him into a situation where he had to stay in there uh, against his will. Now he's offering to go uh, with a degree of dignity, and consequently, we can't in good conscience uh, stand in his way. And do you think that this is the end of the affair at Drummond Middle School? No, I think the, the affair of Trump Middle School will rumble on for a, a number of years because even if Mr Honeyford were to decide to go, then we've got to start the process of rebuilding the lives of the young people within that school that must have been affected. And the damage that it's caused to community relations and to the general peace of Bradford but the Labour group fear that by making Mr Honeyford's letter public, the council could be jeopardising negotiations. They may have actually, by having the press conference that they have and sensationalising the issue again, made it more difficult to get a result. Do you think this will be the end of the affair? Do you think that there will be a successful negotiation, as they put it? I hope there will, but I wouldn't want to, at this stage, raise any expectations because we're only at the stage now where negotiations can take place and those negotiations have a long way to go. Well, the controversy began when Mr Honeyford wrote an article in a right-wing educational magazine. Left-wing critics branded it as racist and they began a campaign to get Mr Honeyford removed. Jane Beckwith has been looking at the background of the whole affair. Mr Honeyford's article criticising Bradford's multicultural education policy appeared in the Salisbury Review in January 1984. When parents of children at Drummond Middle School got to hear about it, they formed an action committee and called for Mr Honeyford's dismissal. Demonstrations were held, the council offered the headmaster money to leave, but he turned it down. In March 1985, they set up an alternative school at the local community centre. Later that month, the Council's Education Subcommittee passed a vote of no confidence in Mr Honeyford. The headmaster was then suspended on full pay, but in June the school governors voted for his reinstatement. The issue then ended up in the High Court. The judge ruled that the Council would be able to take no further disciplinary action against the headmaster. In September 1985, he returned to school after five and a half months' absence. Demonstrations outside the school then became more ugly. Many parents decided to keep their children at home as a protest. Three pro-Honeyford supporters were elected to the school's board of governors, and there were claims the election had been rigged. Race relations in Bradford began to worsen, and Labour and Liberal councillors agreed Mr Honeyford should be given a payoff, but the Tories blocked the move. Two weeks ago, the issue went to the Appeal Court, where it was ruled Bradford Council was entitled to suspend the headmaster, overturning the previous High Court decision. Everything was back at square one again, until this week, when Mr Honeyford decided to accept a golden handshake. Well, today's announcement makes Mr Honeyford's departure from Drummond Middle School now almost inevitable, but the affair looks likely to have wider implications for education, both in Bradford and the rest of the country. Well, here with us in our lead studio, we have Ruben...